So we're gonna talk about three different ways to help prevent freezing in your sprinkler system without having to blow it out. But remember, this doesn't replace having to blow out your sprinkler system, especially in climates where you get really deep freezes or long winters. So the first one I like the best because it's free and it does a really good job of saving your sprinkler system. How to drain your sprinkler system. Most people think that simply shutting off the clock will work, but that's not necessarily true. This only turns off the clock. It does not drain the sprinkler system. So you'll have to grab a bucket and a flathead screwdriver and go outside and find the backflow. This is the most common type of backflow. You may also have a reduced pressure backflow. You may find that your backflow has black plastic caps over the test ports. Remove those. Then, using a flathead screwdriver, turn the screws or ball valves to 45 degrees. Doing this before shutting it off inside allows you to drain it much faster. Make sure that you've turned all of them. This device has two test ports. This reduced pressure backflow has four test ports. Inside the house, identify the water supply for the sprinkler system and shut it off. So you can identify what pipes are for the irrigation by typically they are three quarter inch, not always, but there'll always be a shut off and a drain right afterwards. And then you can follow this pipe and it goes all the way outside. Okay, so main line coming in, there's the main shut off, pressure regulator, meter, backflow for the house, uh, expansion tank on the left, and then this goes up to the rest of the house. Here is the irrigation system. So when I turn this off, you should hear it turn off. There we go. So the sprinkler system's off now, and this is the drain, so we're gonna drain it right here. There you go. There's also different types of drains, like this thumb screw, which is pretty common now in newer homes. It's annoying, but it does work. You can leave the clock on, or go outside and find the valve boxes. Once you open them, you'll see the valves inside. Turn the solenoid around halfway or 180 degrees to leave it on. Find every valve box in your yard. Then you can open every valve you have to let each one of them drain separately. The second one is okay. A lot of people do it. It's really popular, but it doesn't guarantee no freezing. And sometimes it can cost you money. Insulating the backflow. And this does not count as insulating your backflow. So here we've got just your common half inch thick open cell insulation. You can get this at most big box stores. It's pretty common and it's inexpensive. Now, this is insulating most of the pipes, which is good. It is not insulating the backflow uh, or the spigot here. So these are areas that are prone to freezing. Now, this only will protect it if it dips just below 32 degrees. That's why you have this insulating blanket that goes over the top of all this. This, with the backflow blanket, will help protect it for a cool evening that's around 28 to 32 degrees. You'll probably be okay. So this is a really well insulated backflow here. We've got a giant blanket, extra bungee cord around it to keep it a little tighter, and then the pipe insulation down below. This is really gonna help prevent freezing on the backflow and the supply line to the main. You can also use insulation that you can wrap around the pipes like this, or you can use heat tape along the pipes. If you don't have any of those, you can use blankets and duct tape, that works too. Now the third one is pretty involved. It usually involves some digging, some adding some extra parts and things like that, but it's the best option for preventing freezing in your sprinkler system without using an air compressor. And that way is adding drains to the sprinkler system. These are auto drains and they are positioned and installed at the low points of the manifold and in the sprinkler lines. These auto drains do work to keep water out of the system when freezing but 
they do have their own problems, but I'll talk about that in another video. So these three methods will help to prevent freezing for those cold nights in the fall or early winter. Or if you live in an area where you don't get a very strong cold winter, this could take care of it for you. I still recommend blowing it out. And if you wanna know how to do that, check out these videos. And if you have any other questions, let me know, leave a comment below. Hope you like it and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.